Hello, this is Greg Allison with Green Gray. It's coming to you on the 16th of October, 2020, the night thereof. And there's some things you need to know about, some things that really concern me right now, and that is there have been threats against the United States or perceived threats in the intelligence community coming both from Iran and from China, and both could impact our power grid. Specifically, it's the, there's rumors out there that China may strike us before the end of this month. And then there's also rumors out there, and these are supposedly coming from an intel community. And there's also rumors of an impending Iranian attack, an Iranian strike, somehow to re uh, retaliate against the uh, often of General uh, Soleimani. Remember, I did a video about him right after that happened. So we've got a couple of different threats out there. They may play in together. Uh, they may be part of a bigger activity. We're going to get all into that. What does it mean? Is it, and how is this going to play around the election time? There's a lot of dimensions to this. Uh, and could other people be blamed? Uh, <laughs> so what's going to go down? What's going around? We're going to talk about that. But before we get into that, let's look at uh, something else here. I want to share with you guys uh, a really good special right now. There is some good news amidst, amidst all the bad news. And that is right now you can get $100 off. Yes, $100 off a four-week supply of food for one individual. That's 2,000 calories per day. It is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you get this, you're bound to be a winner because it's good, yummy food. And it includes desserts and, and drinks. Uh, it has uh, quite a variety of meals in it. This isn't the old uh, stuff that you used to eat like out of an MRE. This is good, nice quality meals food, and it's got a variety in it. It's a great deal, and it's best of all, this, and there are other companies out there that have uh, food that lasts a long time, but this comes in easy to carry buckets instead of great big containers. So you can get this and be on the go if you have to go to bug out. Uh, so you can skip for storing in, for bugging in and bugging out. And so what you do is go to prepwithgreg.com, prepwithgreg.com, uh, link below in my show notes and in the uh, pinned comment that I put on my chat session. But you can also on here where it says my patron supply, oh, this is through my patron supply kit, click on this and get tons of other prepping gear, survival items, water filtration, air purification, and a whole lot more options in long-term food storage, including gluten-free food. Uh, options. Somebody was asking about this. There's many good deals all through here. As you can see, there's a lot of little survival items in here that can help you get through in a crunch. Uh, and who knows what's coming here because I'm going to tell you, uh, it is my opinion that our power grid is at grave risk. Um, so let's get into it and let's talk about it. So one of the first things that came up to, to my attention is this, is that Iran may attack Americans at home or abroad uh, sometime before the planned inauguration day. Now, whether they did before the election or the inauguration day, seems to be, um, depends on what kind of effect they're trying to get, if they should choose to do anything at all. Now, uh, President Trump has actually reacted to this uh, when he was speaking to Rush Limbaugh last week, because he told them, uh, speaking to Iran, as he was speaking to Iran, he says, if you mm, were around with us, he said, uh, you're going to, I said, we are going to do things to you that have never been done before. Uh, that's a pretty big threat considering our country's dropped uh, two nukes on Japan at the end of World War II. That's, if it's worse than that, uh, what could it be? What does it mean? Uh, of course, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so that's a big thing. You know, uh, General Soleimani was rumored to have been back in a lot of terrorist forces with the Revolutionary Guard uh, Corps that he was over and also the Cuds forces. Um, and he was more focused in that area is my understanding. And it is thought that he had some kind of operations planned against us. At least that's what the claims are. He's already been uh, credited with being behind the Beirut bombing and a lot of other activities against American servicemen. Um, so it seems or it appears there is, but he was effectively, some people claim the number two guy in the Iranian government. You know, you would think the president would be behind the Ayatollah, but hey, there's, there's rumors and rumors and rumors, right? <laughs> and just as a story I'm bringing you now. Uh, but what you don't, may not know is that the, uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps of Iran is active, actually 
openly active inside the United States. They operate out of the United Nations mission in New York, and uh, they have various interest sections in Washington, D.C. Of course, they have an embassy there too, right? Uh, at least I think they do. Uh, but they, uh, in the 1980s, they uh, laid off somebody who was a dissonant to them. Uh, and uh, they were planning to take out a Saudi diplomat in 2011 in Georgetown, in a restaurant in Georgetown uh, with a big bomb and it could have killed hundreds of people. Now, I've been in those, a lot of restaurants in Georgetown. You know, there's a lot of kids around, a lot of students. It's a student town. That would have been awful. It'd be awful anywhere. But that's a cop, very much a college town in Georgetown. Just get out before midnight. Things, that town gets ugly once it gets past, once the subways are shut down. You don't want to be in Georgetown. At least that's what it used to be. <laughs> I've seen some things there in Georgetown. Yeah, I've been to Georgetown a few times. <clears throat> so um, what you might want to know, too, is that um, if this comes before Election Day, you know, uh, President Trump would probably have a bigger reaction. Uh, and maybe they would wait because of that to delay it afterwards, unless they think hitting him would, might keep him out of office. Uh, or it, but they got to realize it might blow back on them. So, you know, they, they're probably not fond of President Trump. And maybe they would like to see him go because he put the screws to him. Uh, so that said, if it happens after the election, though, the uh, some strike, depending on where it is and how it goes down, might actually be blamed on dissident groups here in the United States, maybe the left or the right, because we could have a lot of post-election mayhem going in this country leading up to our inauguration day. Uh, that's a possibility. So who would actually get the blame for something that went down? Who would get the credit? And would, some, would people be claiming credit for stuff that others do? I don't know. You know, uh, so uh, this could lead to all kind of mayhem and consternation uh, inside this country. Uh, what I got to tell you is this. Uh, also, there is a threat of, uh, that I've heard from uh, Mike Adams. I don't know if y'all heard of Mike Adams. He's known as the health ranger. And he's one of the guys who's, who's been taking off a lot of platforms for a lot of things he says. He said that his intel sources tell him that before the uh, before the end of this month, before the end of October, that China plans to launch a major cyber attack upon our electrical grid to take down big parts of our grid. Now, that would be over the top. Why would they do that? They might do that because they're actually planning to move against Taiwan, the Republic of China. The People's Republic of China may be about to hit the Republic of China. Uh, they've certainly been up in the ante almost daily over there. I mean, they've just been turning the, the, the knob up constantly, the gain knob on tension. And it's been getting worse and worse. And it's been mounting or flying into the Taiwanese airspace and uh, making a lot of rhetoric. And I've already reported a lot of that on. There's no point in repeating that. Go back and look at all my other videos on this topic. But the rhetoric is building up. Uh, the rhetoric against Taiwan, the rhetoric against the United States. Uh, as you know, we just had uh, uh, one of our uh, recent destroyers, uh, the new destroyer, the John McCain, go through the area. And they're really, uh, <clears throat> they're fired up about that. And they have also <clears throat> put their, cheese, their ships in the Ch uh, Japanese water. So they, I don't have to do a whole nother video on all this stuff. But the thing of this, and why I'm talking about this is <clears throat> if they were going to make an operation against Taiwan, they would probably prefer that we be maximally distracted here. Maybe they'd like it if we went into Iran. We can't afford to be boots on the ground in Iran they're a big country with a big army and then have to deal with China or Russia, we would be caught with our britches down, so to speak. Uh, we don't want to be there. We've got bigger fish to, to, to have to deal with right now. They want to put boots on the ground in places like that. Uh, we need to get out of those places because China uh, is probably the biggest thing we're going to have to deal with, way bigger than anything we've ever dealt with in, in this country before. I'm going to go more into that really soon. But my friends, uh, th this is a perilous time. My folk, yeah, if you know, let me say one other little pl shameless plug here. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, bang the notification bell, and click all to, so you can get all the notifications for my videos. Uh, because you'll, you'll get more videos like this, and I'm not done with this video. <laughs> and you'll get videos about 
uh, many of the other topics I cover. Well, let me get back there. There's a proposition my channel is to survive, thrive, and stay out of the hide. That's why I bring you this news. I'm going to talk about the power grid and some of these ramifications. So China might decide, now I say China least, I mean the, the, the People's Republic of China as led by the Chinese Communist Party, ostensibly Xi Jinping. Now, there's a lot of good people in China on both sides. And uh, there's also a lot of smart people, a lot of people with good hearts, but it's the leadership that leads countries into turmoil. In this case, I would say it's the, the CCP is headed by Xi Jinping. So keep all these things in mind. Uh, this is not a ding on the people. There's a lot of great people there and they would rather be out from under this uh, boot of tyranny than anyone. And if what they got to offer is so great, then Taiwan would open their arms and say, please take us in your fold. But no, they're, they're ready to risk life and limb because they, they don't want no part of it. So that should be an object lesson to people here. If, the, if the, the Chinese people in the Republic of China, known as Taiwan to most people outside, <laughs> don't want any part of it and they're willing to stick up to, to that point, they might know something. They might know something professors here in America don't teach uh, our students when they get so fond of that area. <clears throat> now, back to it. Um, you might say, Greg, Greg, none of these countries will do these things. Well, Iran is probably already in trouble. They might know that we're, uh, might be about to get into it with uh, China. They, they may have other games, uh, you know, in China and Iran, they're making kind of an access uh, relationship uh, uh, China just invested a huge amount of money into Iran. So they probably got some, they might have a little teamwork going there, good guy, bad guy, or left hook, right hook, more likely that, because I can't see the one of them is a good guy in this play. They might be a left hook, right hook, so we don't know what's coming at us. Uh, I could see that if, a, if China is serious, they want to take Taiwan, there's some things to remember. In November, that water goes bad. So you got to remember, they want to go in before November. <laughs> pour late into November because the state of uh, the Strait of Taiwan gets real choppy. It's a lot harder for them to, to stage an event. And uh, later in November through early November, they might be able to do it. But uh, as the month goes on, it's harder and harder for them to do that than November, December, and January. And then it starts getting better, as, or so I'm told. So I'm not, I'm expecting it would either come before or after all that. Although my friend Stacy Vicky had a dream about two missiles being launched from offshore, uh, a dream, it was a vision from Venezuela to the, uh, to the United States and, and detonated MP devices uh, uh, in space over the United States. Uh, it would, that's a very brilliant military tactic, which would be totally deniable. You wouldn't, if one, we don't have dual line radars in the South, but in the South, and two, uh, since everybody's playing to tie up Venezuela, there's, there's a, Iran, North Korea, China, and Russia, they're all down there. The country's unstable. Anybody can go offshore from there and launch something else, and we wouldn't know who did it. So what do we do? Declare war on the whole world? Well, we don't have much left to declare war at with after a major MP strike like that. So if, uh, and, and we've always believed in the power of the community that if we were to be hit by an enemy, a melted prong attack, they would have boots on the ground hitting uh, substations. They would have, uh, from sleeper cells, they would have um, they would have uh, something from space, maybe a satellite fracture or bombardment system, like the North Korean satellite that flies over the United States regularly. <coughs> or they would have, um, in addition to that, cyber attacks. And maybe they want to launch a cyber attack first while the grid's still operable before they take it out. So that gives them a lot of belts and suspenders redundancy to take out as much as they can and to do it fast. So if the cyber attack starts, keep your eyes wide open and the head on a swivel for real. You need to keep your eyes wide open and the head on a swivel anyway, because friends, we are living in very perilous times. This is the most dangerous time. I, I, when I get done talking to you about China the next time around, you're gonna think we live in the most dangerous times that we've ever had in our species, with the exception of the explosion of the super volcano Toba. Uh, at least the world was recoverable after that. So my friends, no, this is, uh, uh, there's peril, there's peril coming at us, uh, it's evil. And I would say we can stand evil back. You know, I did that video, you shall not pass. And that's what I'm talking about. We've got to find our ways to stop this. So um, in regards to Iran, 
somebody asked the uh, Iranian, somebody took it upon them to tell the head of the Iranian uh, uh, Revolutionary uh, Guard that there's only nine substations you got to take out in America. If you, there's nine of them, if you can find the right ones, these nine, that you can take down the entire American power grid. You know, they had been published. And his response was, nine, well, I've already got 20 targeted. They have sleeper cells here in the United States. They have sleeper cells here. And, and, and they made some other motions uh, and, and insinuations about a strike on us vis-a-vis -vis the way they're tracking our aircraft carriers right now in the area. So I don't know, that would be crazy. It would be insane. But these leaders may have some mental problems right now. The, their, their power bases are challenged and that makes them irrational. And they're, um, look, what China's doing right now is irrational. It's irrational for them to be pushing on Japan, India, into all into the South China Sea, the Mongolians. Uh, now, now they're going to be putting Tibetans in concentration camps in addition to the Uyghurs. Uh, they're pushing on everybody, including the Russians. They're pushing on everybody all around them. They're starting to push harder and harder and harder. Uh, they, they have used up all their good social credit in the world, and it's like they don't care anymore. That's dangerous. So yeah, all this stuff might be off the rocker dangerous, but off the rocker dangerous, crazy stuff is happening right now. So this is why your eyes better be open and your head on the swivel. This is why you need to pair up and prepare. You need to prep and prepare as much as you can. Buy seeds. I got links to True Leaf Market below. Get heirloom seeds. Start practicing growing stuff in your home. If you don't have a garden, uh, you can get microgreens and all the supplies through True Leaf Market links below. Uh, you need to um, <clears throat> learn silent hunting and gardening. Uh, <clears throat> if you're out in the woods and you got a bang bang and you pull the trigger and it goes bang, everybody's gonna know where you're at for a mile while around and they're gonna think two things. Ah, dinner. And they may be thinking more about you than what you just took out because <laughs> you're probably gonna be bigger because big game's only gonna, all gonna be gone in a couple of months. It won't be any big game past two months. Uh, <clears throat> you're gonna be shooting at varmints. But it also says, oh, there's a bang bang. <laughs> I get a two, I get a twofer here. I get a big long pork mill and a bang bang. And so they just lay in wait and ambush you somewhere. Uh, you need to hunt solid if you wanna hunt. So I did a video on that, I'll do more on it. No, hey, it's solid. See that? This is a blow gun, a blow gun dart. When you when this goes out, it goes poof, 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 poof. <laughs> so you hear, and that can take a deer. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty substantial blade right there. Look at next to my finger. You see that? That is not uh, trivial for a blow dart. Yeah, there's a little wire size ones, and they might be good against varmints, but that one uh, <laughs> it can do the job. Uh, you, you can find the video on YouTube. There's some pretty good sized game been taken out with these things. All right, all that said, you also uh, better learn wild foraging. I do lots of videos on wild foraging. That's why I do them. You really need to know that. You need to know how to purify and sanitize water. That's two different things. Unlike our, our good friend uh, Hodges with the Common Sense Show, he <laughs> he seemed to get him confused. Uh, he, he was thinking that uh, his solar thing would would purify water. No, it will sanitize water, it will purify you. Need a, a filter will purify it. It's because just what purification is getting all the junk out. Sanitizing is killing the bugs and a, the, a virus will slip through your filters. So you better find a good way. Well, that solar thing would be a good way. I'm not selling those right now, but it, that, you know, anything you can use to boil water will, is capable of killing the bad bugs in it. All right, all that said, you need to know these things. You need to get ready. You may have to bug out or bug in, you better be prepared either way. If you can bug in, you're better off. But you know, if, if it gets too hot in the kitchen, be prepared to go and be prepared to blend in, to be a gray man. I gotta do some videos on these things coming up. So I have focused this spring on gardening, well, more this time on uh, wild edibles, which is gonna be very important if you're on the move. <laughs> but you need to do both. You, you're not gonna be able to garden uh, grow as much food as you might think initially. You got to build your skills up. You got to have a good seed base, and but you need to grow and 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 you need to do wild edibles as much as you can. 
because it's going to take a lot to get through what may be coming at us if it comes. If the grid goes down, this country is in dire trouble. They postulated a nine out of 10 loss. If you saw my videos with uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Price, he was on the pre he was on the congressional task force that was appointed to investigate the EMP matters. And, and, and upon our discussion with each other, and I've known Peter Fry for a long time, we talked about how those numbers were derived. And I told him I thought they were optimistic and he agreed with me. They're optimistic. It could be far worse than that. And there's the Deagle report. I should go more into that in the not too distant future. And maybe that's optimistic. So our friends, we are in perilous times. I mean, don't, don't discount it. You might think you're prepped, but you know, we're gonna have to have each other's backs. We're gonna start working on our tribe network. I got my taxes behind me now, finally. Uh, and you know, so I'm saying, Greg, what tax on your taxes? I had $86,000 in receipted expenses that had to be categorized and appropriated against various cost categories. And the partial taxes uh, associated with each one to get that all properly uh, accounted for. And I had a lot of little bitty income streams that came from many different directions. I had to, to rack and stack all that. And uh, it turned out my, my losses were greater than my income. Uh, when you get $86,000 in receiving expenses, yeah, you, you're going to rack it up. And that wasn't my only expenses. I that one didn't count gas. It didn't count my, I didn't count any of my internet expenses and stuff I bought credit cards over the internet, all the seeds I bought and things like that. That wasn't part of it. So <clears throat> I just didn't have time. I just didn't have time. My internet site that I use for my worm farm, uh, the email I've used for it, uh, I didn't count any of that, or, you know, my YouTube uh, tools. Now, this is part of my business. YouTube is a funnel, you know, for, for selling worms, or was it was. <laughs> it will be again. I'll start the worm farm back, but we've got to get ready. I would urge everybody to go to housefivespaceal.com and, and send me a letter and put tribes in the email subject line so that uh, y'all know you're interested in tribes. If you're interested in joining our Freedom Network, you put freedom in there because we're really going to have to fight to preserve our freedoms. Uh, so we've got the Freedom Restoration Foundation. Don't tread on our freedoms. But, you know, we, we, got a, <laughs> uh, we have a Facebook site now. You can find us on Facebook for now until they go, <laughs> you know what I mean. <clears throat> so this thing with Iran, this thing with China are individually uh, problematic together, and it could be working together. There might be something to be concerned with. When would this happen? And we got Mike Adams saying in a couple of weeks, we've got uh, some people saying that Duran might hit us, but uh, just before inauguration day, we've got the vision by Stacey Savicki that seems to indicate sometime in December. Now that doesn't mean that any of these things will happen by any stretch of the imagination. And you can't say, oh, Greg said we're gonna get hit. No, Greg didn't say that. I said, we might, uh, there is a risk and you need to be ready. You need to be mentally ready. You need to be spiritually ready, and you need to be able to ready to take care of your friends, your family, mainly your, your fa family and yourself. So you need to have food storage. You need to have you know ways to defend yourself and your family. You need to have ways if you need to go bug out. How are you going to travel? How are you going to get there? How you, uh, will you need to be able to travel unseen? How are you going to do that? <laughs> Especially if you have to get out of town. See, that's where you're going to be in a real pickle. If you got to get out of town, whoo, Lord help you. And if you are in town, everybody's going to be knocking on your doors. There's going to be a lot of hungry people. And pretty soon you're going to start looking like a long pork, like a pork chop. <laughs> I had a friend who lived in New York. She's in upper state New York, though. And I told her she was going to be, a, she stayed up there. She was going to be a pork chop. Well, she took that to heart and moved to Arizona. <laughs> I won't say where or who she is, but. I've called her pork chop for quite a while after that. <laughs> Turns out she didn't like being called pork chop, so we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, friends, don't be a pork chop. <laughs> don't be a pork chop. If you live in New York City, you might want, not want to be there. Uh, you might not want to be in Los Angeles. Now, hey, I've been to Los Angeles, and, and Rex Bear and I sitting up on the Mount Hollywood. Uh, looking out over Los Angeles and talking about uh, what uh, what could happen there. Tw almost 22 million people in that big basin, the kind of disasters they may face. And I've been there to uh, the DeVace family farm. And, you know, they're the most prepared people you'll find in Pasadena. They can grow enough food on 
tenth of an acre to feed themselves and a whole lot of other people. And if everybody did that, we wouldn't have much to worry about now, would we? So that, these are why people need to learn these kind of skills. Okay, so the, here's the bottom line is this. Our power grid is at risk given the tension in the world, especially with China and what they might be planning to do vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan and their consideration they might need to neutralize us first. They may want to do something. If uh, the idea was, that I was seeing circulated about uh, Trump uh, with the Iranians were that they might want to wait to after the election and they wouldn't want to do anything because he might be more reactive before and he might have his hands more tied when he's on the way out to office. Maybe not the time. I don't know. That's, or it may be unclear who did it or who, what it was, but they're in here taking out our substations. Uh, yeah, well, they've already kind of admitted they would do that. So that would be highly suspicious. Although I do think the, uh, it is more interesting that the, uh, practice run, it was done on the Metcalf uh, substation near San Jose, it coincided with the first overfly of a Korean satellite over Washington, D.C. to the same day. And at the same time, they had a tramp steamer in the, the Chung Chung gang uh, around in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico running around with two fully erect missiles inside missile launchers in the cargo hold. Okay, yeah, two. We heard the number two before, didn't we? Offshore from where? Venezuela. Ah, maybe they have already practiced this. And, you know, it seemed like we were making friends with North Korea there for a little bit, but now they're rolling out these big uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that could be carrying Merv warheads. Holy smoke, holy smoke. You know, they, a lot of these people operate under Sun Tzu principles, and it was kind of looking for a bit like North Korea and was starting to bite at the hand it had been feeding them for years, but it may all be a show. North Korea and China might be thicker and fleas on a tick. <laughs> Ticks on a hound dog, how about that? Uh, fleas on a dog. They may be uh, still really thick and just putting out a show that they're not. That's also part of Sun Tzu type philosophy. So my friends, it is a very, very perilous time. Get ready, be prepared. I truly hope that none of these things happen. I truly hope that we can find a way to get through this age we're living in and come out on the other side. If the worst comes, it's our plan that we be able to stand up on the other side, shake it off and, and build a new. But I hope it don't come to that because that's a lot of, it's a whole lot to come back from. So just letting you know, there it is. So what can you do? Get ready, pray, pray. Watch some other videos. I give more advice on those. What you can do. Join our Freedom Restoration Foundation. Uh, let's, let's at least try to maintain our freedoms here while we can. Join the Tribe Network. And always be sure to vote local. And spend your money local. Vote with your dollar. That's what I'm trying to say. Vote with your dollar. And spend it locally. Support local tradesmen. Local businesses. Local farmers. Small guys, not the big shops, the little onesies, mom and pop shops, and mom, mom and pop tradesmen, the individual that's out there trying to do things instead of the big companies, even your local big companies, because they're all in, in bed with City Hall and they're, they're all out there to, to take your money. All right, friends, all with that, I'm going to leave you for the night. It's been, I didn't make a video yesterday, and I've done this and it was a quickie because I was doing those taxes. I took vacation to do my taxes. I burned up almost my, down to my last day of vacation just to work on taxes. So that's how busy I've been. <laughs> anyway, and this was the late tax filing and I still didn't get everything done. I still wasn't able to claim all my expenses. The good thing is I'm not gonna have to pay this year. I'll get a couple nickels back. That's a good thing. All right, everyone, thank you for watching.